most of my dreams are nightmares. Like I don't have happy dreams. They're always nightmares, monsters, vampires. I mean, I'm not even afraid of vampires, but I dream <laughs> of vampires all the time. Like in movies, vampires don't scare me, but in my dreams, they're horrifying. So I don't know, yeah, Wes Craven, this bitch, and like, right <laughs> yes, who knows? <laughs>
So I'm very, like, every time he sends me clips, I'm like, dude, when is this going to be ready? This looks so good. It's not even color corrected yet. Um, the sound's not even fully done, and it already looks incredible. I'm like, dude, like, let's <laughs> just release it so everybody can see how hard we work. He's like, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. I cried, and he's like, he's really working his ass off. Um, so I don't know. I think I'm really excited for people to meet Sienna, of course, because I think she's an incredible character, but also, like, Aside from that, the other characters are insane. The actors that we worked with, that I had the pleasure of working with, that you will meet in Terrifier 2, are just next level. They're, they're so easy to work with. They brought it every single take. Um, yeah, I don't know. You're, you're just going gonna, gonna to fall in love with these characters, I promise. Yay. Well, yeah. listen, if you do get an answer from Damien, you let us know so we can all be in the know. I mean, it's, it seems like the rumors are towards October, Halloween time. Yeah, I, I, I asked him about that as well. I'm like, I, I like put my foot down once. I was like, it's going to be by Halloween, right? Like 2021. And he's like, yes, yes, don't worry. We'll definitely be by then, hopefully sooner. So he's trying to get it because it's really as soon as he's done editing, it's out of his hands at that point. He just has to give it to distributors, and it's really up to them. Um, so he, that's why he doesn't want to disappoint anybody by giving them a date, because he might have a date in mind, but that's why he's saying Halloween, worst case scenario, um, which I think would be a, a appropriate for me. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to have it sooner, but it would make sense. It is a Halloween film, so we'll see. I wish I could tell you. I wish he could tell us, but no one really knows yet. I, I feel like the one thing that Terrifier 2 has already like taught us is patience. You know? He's <laughs> like, be patient. Yes. I think, I think this entire year has taught us patience, to be honest. I mean, <sighs> everything that's been happening. Yep. <laughs> yep. Waiting. Couldn't agree more. Yes. You nailed that. Yep. So I know we've asked you before about working with David and, um, but uh, I think we're really curious about what it was like the first time you saw Art the Clown on set. Mm. Yeah, it was like a year and a half ago when I saw him. I, like the first time I saw him in costume was like October 29th or something of 2019. And, wow. um, and it was uh, intense. Like, because that's in, in film, we don't, we don't film it chronologically. Right. right the movie we film it whatever makes sense so it was like middle to end of the movie like so he was pretty brutal looking at the, the point where when i saw him um i think like me and kaylee were getting ready for one of our scenes and kaylee is the one that plays brooke um she's the blonde one that's dressed like the pirate in the in the trailer um brilliant actress by the way i'm very excited for you guys to meet her character um and we're just like gabbing along like oh what are you thinking about this or i don't know talking about the scene or whatever and then like Dave, like he kind of sneaks up behind us. And I'm pretty sure he was like behind a door, but like he was just kind of like doing something crazy and like horrifying and he scared the shit out of us. Like, dude, I, I mean, it, it helps, I guess, for the scene, like you can use it, but like, we're like, dude, we're, we can't deal with this right now. If we're talking about the scene, please leave us alone. Um, but he would, he would constantly do that. He would constantly just try to get like, and not even just us. He tries to get like a rise out of anybody because he's just like a character. He's a character actor. He loves an audience. <laughs> Most people that met, that have met him know that. Like he just is always like he's on all the time. Um, so yeah, and he's he's usually when he takes like his teeth out, he um, is not as scary because he just sounds like Dave. Like he's he's just a silly, fun loving like he's a good guy, so he's just like fun loving, constantly cracking jokes. But when he's like in his full display, he does like that contortion with his face because he has a um, great um, a manipulation, like facial manipulation. He's great at it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dave. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, yeah, 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 he has a great manipulation with his face, so when he does that, it, it, it truly terrifies me, because I am horrified of clowns, I, I don't know if I've told you that before, um, I'm pretty vocal about my fear of clowns, uh, so yeah, I wasn't particularly looking forward to the clown stuff, but I think hopefully it will come off as, uh, realistic, because it was. <laughs> So, I mean, you said he's he's always on, so I guess the follow-up to that is, you know, is he still art 
at lunch or does he go back to being David? <laughs> <laughs> when I say on, I mean like he's constantly like performative. Like he's constantly like trying to perform for somebody, whether it's cracking a joke. And it, it, it could be just because like we've had hard days on set, you know? So he's maybe trying to lighten the mood um, or just because he just likes to have a good time. I don't know the method to his madness. Um, but no, when he, when his teeth come out and even when they say cut, like he's usually like back to doing something like weird with his body or I don't know, um, just being silly and, and loose, uh, which made it easy to work with. So like, I don't need to be looking at him from far, even after cut being like, Hey man, <laughs> <laughs> so, like I could just talk to him like a human that he is. So, yeah, great. Love that. So, you mentioned obviously that you have a disdain for clowns, but were you a fan of horror films growing up? And is there any that stand out to you as being, I know it's asking for a favorite is always difficult, but do you have a favorite? Oh my God. Um, I always say it, honestly, it really depends on my mood, but I think my go-to has always been Halloween just because there's such a nostalgia with that. Um, Halloween's my favorite holiday too. So I still have my Halloween decorations up, by the way. Like, even the ones that were outside, I literally just took down. But the ones that are inside, I haven't. Like, my neighbors probably think I'm insane. I don't care. But, um, yeah, I love Halloween. And I love any, even shows that have, like, The Simpsons. They have, like, the Halloween special. It's Treehouse, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, they're, they're, that's what makes a favorite show for me. Like, that's why I love The Simpsons. I love shows that will just, like, go all out for Halloween. So yeah, Halloween's probably my favorite. However, like more modern ones, I really love the Babadook. Um, I, I, I <laughs> so good. Like the, the the villain is horrifying. The the creature is horrifying, but also the actors, both the son and the mother, are brilliant. They're fantastic. They're just so I, I could watch that movie over and over again. So I mean, it really just depends on my mood. I also really love um, Evil Dead. Mm. Oh, yeah. I love Bruce Campbell. Like I can't, I can't help it. He's just great at what he does. Um, yeah, I don't know. But probably Halloween would probably be my go-to. But I love all horror films. I actually just watched um, Sweet Home. It's a Korean uh, series on Netflix. It's actually I haven't heard of it. you watch it. It's pretty good. It's it kind of gives you Evil Dead vibes. Like it's mm -hmm. not. I don't. Think it's mostly CGI, but like a lot of there's a lot of blood, there's a lot of gore. So I was enjoying it. It's a little bit different. It was revolves around a curse, but anybody who wants something new to binge, try that to be like. Thank you. Yeah, I know. Um, I, I guess on Halloween time, Danik and I were kind of going back and forth on a couple like new movies. I think um, Hush. Have you seen Hush, Lauren? Yes. Yes, from the girl, the girl uh, who's married to Mike Flanagan. That was in um, uh, the Haunted, the new Haunted. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I he has probably become one of my favorite directors. So good, he's just that... brilliant. Doctor Sleep. Oh yeah, oh dude. Yes. That's right. That's dude. Right. I forgot that he did that. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, I'm very happy with the new generation of directors, especially of our directors, Damien. Um, so yeah, we got we got stuff. We got stuff for our generation. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right, let's see. Oh, um, so are there any other parts of production that you're interested in? You know, have you thought about doing directing, producing, any design perhaps? Writing, definitely. Ooh, yeah. I've been writing with my best friend, Angie. Um, it's what have, have do you guys know about Clubhouse? Mm -hmm. The app Clubhouse? Look it up. Do you do you have are you iPhone users? That one is. That I am. <laughs> If you want an invite i have some invites available but they're great because you can go into rooms and it's a level playing field like there are rooms with like famous directors famous actors famous writers and you can kind of listen to everybody talk about their creative process and it's not just creatives like business people have rooms there and blah 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 um and i go into writers rooms all the time because i'm trying to like listen to how what, like what their process is and stuff like that um, the series that my friend and I are writing is a comedy. It's it's not a horror film. I just don't know if I have it in me to write horror. Maybe one day. I have a lot. Most of my dreams are nightmares. Like, I don't have happy dreams. They're always nightmares, monsters, vampires. I mean, I'm not even afraid of vampires, but I dream <laughs> of vampires all the time. Like, in movies, vampires don't scare me, but in my dreams, they're horrifying. So, I don't know. 
got Wes Craven, this bitch, and like, <laughs> yes. Who knows? <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. That's awesome. So you said you're you're working on a, a series. You said, or yeah, said- a comedy series with me and my friend um, about our adventures abroad. Uh, we got into some predicaments, and uh, like you can't make up the things that we did. And some of the things, you know, were an exaggeration and we took some liberties, but most of it is autobiographical and it's just ridiculousness. So I really want to share that with the world. And it's just like a coming of age story, two girls who are acting like idiots abroad. And so, yeah. It sounds oh, really fun. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I love Bag. I don't know if you've ever seen the show Bag. It's brilliant. Um, I love Pen15 and Broad City. And I'm very inspired by these women and these comedians. So hopefully I can contribute because they make me feel less alone in my stupidity. So hopefully I can share that with <laughs> So are, are these also roles that you could play yourself? Like, yes. like are you gonna? Yes, yes. Okay. My friend and I plan on being the role, like playing ourselves, exaggerated, ver- like they're heightened versions of ourselves. Um, yeah, we, we weren't as crazy as what we're writing because you have to heighten situations yeah. for film or else it's what, what's the point. Um, but yes, I want to do comedy. I would love to. I, I'm not a natural at it like Dave is. Like I'm someone that kind of needs to work at it. And like I've taken improv classes for years and uh, it, it doesn't come naturally to me. I think dramatic roles come naturally to me. Um, but comedy is like, kind of where my heart is because I go there with horror, comedy and horror. Um, when I have nothing to do, I'll just kind of disappear like in the day into one of those films or shows just to like relieve stress or just to like, just disappear from reality. So yeah, my favorite genre is comedy and horror. That I is. would say, you know, I think a lot of people are under the impression that comedy is easy. It is way harder than drama. I mean, I mean, this is also coming from a director. Dra- drama, no problem. I've got questions for days. I can do that no, not, without even thinking about it. Comedy is so hard because it's about timing. Mm-hmm. It's like 99% about timing. And if you don't innately have that, you have to find it. It's really hard. And you yeah. have to then have you know actors that are responsive to it and can feel it and can understand it and can move around it. it is, really hard man hard it's because you're put on the spot and and also you have to like you have to remind yourself to not try to be funny because if mm-hmm. you try to be funny that you is not. a lot on your face mm-hmm. it's just about living truthfully in a ridiculous and heightened situation living as truthfully and as seriously as possible mm-hmm. even like if you think about like michael scott in the office like uh steve carell's character like he's never trying to be funny he's yeah. just very serious. Like he's just serious in being an idiot. Like it's it's great and it always works. I'm a, I'm an office fan, so. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. It is funny that you mentioned that because I was gonna say before, like for Halloween, I think my husband and I went back and watched every single Halloween af- like episode of The Office this year. So fun. <laughs> I love the Halloween episodes. You're right. I can, I can watch them just over and over again. You're right. Like any show that has that highlights Halloween is like my favorite. Well, uh, one of the other things Danica and I wanted to ask you, and since we're kind of talking about it now, what can you tell us about studying improv? And it looks like you studied at the Upright Citizens Brigade. That is so badass. So what was that process like? It was amazing. Um, uh, One of the reasons actually why I hadn't even heard of the Upright, the UCB Upright Citizens Brigade until I started watching Broad City. Um, I don't know if you've ever watched Broad City. Isn't it? Okay, yeah, it's a great show. But I heard that those girls uh, studied there. And I know that Abby from Broad City is from Philly. So I kind of have like this like kind of connection with her. I'm like, yeah, Philly girl. But um, so when I, and when I fell in love with the show, I actually heard about the show because when I first started acting, I had to do a commercial. And in the breakdown, which is the description of my character, it said, um, allude to like the girls from Broad City. It's that kind of vibe. And I was like, girls from Broad City, what is it? What are they talking about? So I had to like look up the show and this was a couple years ago. I was late to the game and I was like, oh my God, the show is brilliant. And I thought the girls were brilliant. And I was like, this is hilarious. I love this. So I was like, where, how did they get so good? So I was looking up 
you know, where they studied and they met at the Upright Citizens Brigade. And I'm like, maybe I'll find my Abby or my Alana at the Upright Citizens Brigade. Uh, and I met some wonderful people, um, but little did I know I already had my um, counterpart in my friend who wasn't an actor, she's a voice actor. Um, so yeah, but the experience there was freeing. Um, you get on stage and, and I've done theater, but this, this is like, you know, it's unscripted. So you can, so when you get a laugh and when, especially when you're not trying, because that's the point, you're not trying to get a laugh, but when you get a laugh, it's like you're on top of the world. If there's no better feeling and it's just about trust, it's about trusting the person. It's about helping them. Um, one ritual we all had when we all got on stage is we would pat each other on the back and like, got your back, got your back, got your back. Because that's the point. You have to have each other's back. And if they drop a line, you pick them up. You, you have to find a way. It's not about you. It's about your scene partner. Um, a lot of yes ends, which anybody, that's like rule one of improv. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was unreal. I absolutely loved it. I would go back. I think the one I went to closed down oh. because of COVID. I was devastated, uh, but they, I think they might have some Zoom stuff. Um, I'd recommend anybody, even if you're not a creative, even if you're not a performer, do improv. You will learn about yourself. Like <laughs> you'll learn about um, how to communicate in a more effective way. Like it's just, it's yeah. so, even acting classes in general, but improv is just so fun. Even public speakers, I think would I, think, I would say that you know improv is also really good for any actor at all period because not only does it like get you out of your head so you stop thinking about it and you just respond um yeah. and you start listening to other people but yes. it's also it's going to train you how to like you're saying help each other because yeah. lines get dropped all the time on stage and there are way too many times when i see people just freeze and i'm like if only you're taking an improv class you would have known how to help each other keep going. Oh, 100%. Find your and, way back, yeah. And improv isn't just like spoken word. You can exactly. improvise a thought. You can improvise subtext. You can improvise, you know, a weird like- Movement. Uh, exactly, exactly. I, I actually also happen to specialize in contact improv. Oh, that's so cool. It's oh, super yeah. fun and we should play. <laughs> play it. I love that. That's yeah. amazing. Oh, that's yeah. so amazing. Do you have like videos? You should, you should like, do you like video? I'll probably do somewhere. Yeah. And and post it. Because I would love to see that. Like I, I think creatives would love to see like just actors playing and improvising together. So it's a thought. Do it. Now you have to do it, Danica. Now it's now I mean, it's on shit. Yeah, so. <laughs> and I'm there. <laughs> Yeah. I, was, I was also going to say one of my favorite shows of all time is Curb Your Enthusiasm. And just knowing it's like essentially all improv drop, you know, everything's scripted, but the dialogue and every, it's, I, mind blown. Binged that show during COVID, like the beginning of COVID. I think the Fulhams, uh, uh, the kid who plays my brother, Elliot, and his parents told me about Curb Your Enthusiasm. I was like, yeah, I've heard of it. And they're like, watch it. And I was like, okay. Fell in love, like binged it in like a week. I loved it. I was like, this is amazing. It, so, because I, I was like, I dabbled in Seinfeld. Like it was like a little bit before my time. Like, and I still watched it, but it was for, not. When I watched the hell out of Seinfeld. It was our time. <laughs> I've never seen it myself, Seinfeld. Not one episode. I'm really sorry. It's it's worth the watch. It's 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 perfect. But but you know, like in Curb, the role of George is based off of Larry David. So right, you'll yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> yeah, let's let's see. I was gonna ask, do you yeah. remember um, your first film or TV casting ever? <laughs> oh, yeah, um, my first. Do you mean like um, audition or getting cast? Either or both. We'll take it. We'll take both. I'll give you both. Okay. Um, okay. So the first time I auditioned ever for anything was for a student film and um, didn't get it. Totally bombed. Um, and I didn't even take acting classes at this point. I was just like, I'm just going to throw myself into this. See what happens. I got there and the rose forgot all of my lines and and they were so i mean they were students they were like filmmaker students so they were like um take your time like you need a minute to go take a minute like they were so understanding and i was like cool okay and i came back and i was like nope that was not leave i'm so sorry i didn't waste your time 
Um, and then when I got in the car, like to drive home, I just like kind of shook it off and I was like, okay, time to take classes because I can't just, I, you can't just do this and like expect to be good. Like it's just not how it works. And that's with my stupid assumption. I was like, I'm just gonna be good. No, like you need to, you need to practice your craft. Just like a doctor takes classes continuously to continue to keep himself educated, keep himself or herself educated on their job. Actors have to do the same thing. You have to continuously practice your craft. Um, so that was my first ever experience uh, not getting cast, but going to an audition. My first experience getting cast, I believe, was for um, Iron Fist, Marvel's Iron Fist on Netflix. Um, and I went to New York and I was so, I was sweating. Like I was, because I because it was a martial arts show and I was like, I want this so badly. And I had friends that were uh, doing stunts on the show and I was like, we could work together and it'd be cool. So I get in and um, I know I delivered my line like awfully. Well, at least it felt bad. It didn't, I, it didn't feel natural. It felt like very contrived and I felt like a robot saying it. And she was like, the casting director was like, okay, great. Um, let's do like some moves, some martial arts moves. And martial arts at the time, I had been doing like 15 years plus. And I was like, yeah, I got that. And I just like in this tight room, like whipped out some moves. And um, I felt confident because I acting was very new to me. So I didn't feel confident, but martial arts I've been doing for like 15 plus years. So I just whipped it out and I was like, Cop, I was like, yeah, I got this. Um, and then she was like, great, like, you'll hear from us. And I was like, okay. And I remember reaching out to my agent at the time and being like, she said, I'll hear from them. Is that a good sign? Like, is it a good to hear from them? And she was like, yeah, like, they don't say that. And I was like, okay, cool. And I heard from them like a couple days later and they were like, yeah, you got the part. And it was a small, like a short part, um, but it was it was a great experience. And I, I, I worked with some brilliant actors who, kind of told me their own experience and I learned a lot. Um, I didn't get to do any martial arts, which I was really pissed about because I was like, you made me do it in the room when I was auditioning. Why wouldn't I do it on the whatever? <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> Annie, uh, that's a friend of mine who's a brilliant actress, Annie. Um, but yeah, no, it, that was a, a wonderful experience and probably my first ever TV booking. How, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. How, how often would you say that you do get to implement your martial arts experience into roles? That's a tricky question. Um, because my acting coach, who's brilliant, his name is Brian Fox. Um, and he, he was a working actor before he retired and just like focused on uh, coaching actors. Um, he always uses like Bruce Lee to like, whenever I'm feeling like, I don't know, in my head about a scene or something, he'll like quote Bruce Lee for me because he knows it like resonates with my heart and soul. So I feel like I implement it in a lot of ways, not physically, but mentally. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of actually being able to like show off my moves, not often enough, man, like not enough. And I wish that I would get more auditions doing like badass female, which is why I was super excited about the Sienna role because I was like, okay, like she obviously will get to do a little bit of something. Um, then I hope to get more of those. Like my dream as a child was like, I want to work with Jackie Chan. I want to be an actor and work with Jackie Chan. Like that was the goal when I was like nine. And I was like, okay, like this is going to happen. And it just like, I never attempted to act before like four years ago now. So yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh well, I was going to say, what about a role in something like Cobra Kai? H how do you feel about those situations? I would do it. I would. I would. I would audition the shit out of that. Um, I was actually. I, I worked overnight on set last night on this film, not for nothing. And uh, this actor that I got to work with, who plays my love interest, he's the lead in the film, and actually I play his love interest, um, not for nothing, in the film we filmed last night. Um, uh, we were talking about Cobra Kai because he's he lives in LA and I'm a New York based actor. Um, so he's like, dude, you have to come out to LA, like Cobra Kai, like you got to do it, you got to do it. And I'm like, yeah, but LA is COVID central right now, so I don't <laughs> do that. But um, yeah, a Cobra Kai, I would absolutely love. I think actually, two of the actors on Terrifier Two are in an episode of Cobra Kai. Oh. Look this up. I'm pretty sure no one I actually worked with. Um, I think one of Jonathan's friends did okay. when they, that phase, Jonathan's friends and the mom. I think one of the moms. 
So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there are people in Terrifier too that was in Cobra Cat. Fabulous. Um, okay, so Jude had a question we're gonna go back to. He wanted to know what the biggest hurdle to overcome from martial arts training to on-screen combat. Mm, uh, for, so both of them, I guess. What was the biggest hurdle for martial arts training and also on-screen combat? Yeah, I, I guess that's what he's getting at. Or maybe like how the you maybe have to, yeah, the transition, like maybe how you have to change yeah. something. Oh, there you go, like pulling a punch. Oh. Okay. Ooh, punch, yes, yeah, that, that's a very good question because it is different. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm fortunate enough that I have like an army of uh, friends who are stunt performers. Um, like my friends, uh, Justin, Drew, Brandon, Muhammad, um, yeah, but it, I'm like missing a couple, but like I have a lot of friends who are stunt performers. And a couple years ago, like we would go to the gym and all train together and they would teach me how to react, how to fall, like how to pull a punch to make it look like, you know what I mean? To make it look, because it's different. It's it's like exaggerated. And it's, it's very different from, because I remember when they were showing me how to do it, I would punch and it would be technically correct and they were like, yeah, but you need to, like, especially with like hooks, you need to make everything like really big. And you need to learn not to like trace, like if someone hooks you, you can't like do any of this. Like, you know what I mean? Like it's, it, it was a hurdle in the beginning. Now it's a little bit like second nature because I worked with them for years doing it because they are professionals. And it was just fun to like film ourselves doing like stupid shit, like stupid fight scenes that I saw I actually put on my Instagram um, but also falling was like very scary for me. Like learning how to like taco, like do you know what that is? Like when you jump back and you fall mm -hmm. over your like top shoulders and your legs go back. Falling was so scary. It's and really dangerous to yeah. be wrong. But we, we had, um, like I was around professionals and, and we had pads, like I knew I was safe, but still falling in like a pit of foam, like my friend Justin would be like, Lark, fall. And I was like, no. And he was like, just fall. You're going to be fine. I'm like, I can't do it. And he's like, how are you going to do stunts? And I'm like, ah. And I, I finally did it. But like, he was like pushing me so hard to try to, all of my friends were like, dude, you can't do your own stunts if you're not willing to fall. But if you can fall, if you can get over that hurdle, I think you can do most stunts. Because I think a lot of the reactionary stuff, um, as long as you like, you know, uh, loosen up so you don't get whiplash. Um, it's it, pretty simple to do. I think most people can do it. It's it's all in your head. It's all a mind game. So as long as you are okay with like falling and doing all that stuff, you're solid. I think most people can do it. <laughs> See, yeah. it reminds me of like um, in wrestling, it's called like taking a bump when you literally have to like tuck your chin and fall and like land on that sweet mm -hmm. spot of your back. And I remember the first time, like I didn't want to do it and someone swept my leg and I fell back. And you don't tuck your chin, you hurt yourself, oh, yep. you know? like. Flash. It's 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 not fun. It's not for me, and that's why we'll leave it to professionals like you, Lauren. That's you know, I'm glad somebody can do it. Uh, Danica, have you ever tried to do something I like that? I teach it. <laughs> well, you can take a. Oh no, yeah, girl. Yeah, I do. I do stage combat too. So that's that's one of the things that I really, really, really enjoy. Is like I always try to take more classes and and someday hope to be certified in it so I can teach it. And like it's just it's I love it. Totally. Oh my god, it's so fun. And I mean, when you do it, you feel like a badass. And another thing I, I forgot to mention, um, because you have to like harden yourself, you have to toughen yourself up. I, I took a couple classes. And we would have to like literally take medicine balls and throw them at each other's stomachs and like, sides and like that, like the, the, the hard parts to strengthen it. So you get used to the idea of getting hit or falling or just so you get used to the idea of the contact. And in the beginning, like I'm getting like hit with like a medicine ball. I'm like, oh my god, like this is hard. But um, after a while, you feel like a badass. Like, oh, I can take it, give it to me. It's, so good. it's a lot of fun. It's, it, it really is. I, I recommend it for anybody who's interested, like try it. Be like, it does make you feel like a super badass. I have to agree. Mm. It's, cool. it's cool. You feel like a badass. You're like, I'm a superhero. So, it's awesome. I know how to sword fight. Like, come on. How fucking badass is that? I love it. It's amazing. Do it. Do all the sword fights. Say it. But do it. Not me. Well. <laughs> uh, Danica, why don't you but, ask um, yeah, one more and see. then we'll um, go to the game. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, so... Oh, oh gosh, I guess uh, this one. Okay. Um, 
having worked in it with a couple of different ones, what would you say is the most challenging accent for you to work with? Oh man, um, all of them. But uh, okay, here's the thing. Like I, I've been asked a couple times, like I've been put on the spot, like do this accent. And I'm just not that person. Like I need a couple days to like um, really find the uh, the consonants and the and the vowels. Like I, I need to find the sounds. Like it takes me days. I remember um, one of my first auditions, and I really wanted this part. I wanted it so badly, but they ended up not even filming. I was devastated. Um, I my agent was like, Lauren, can you do a, a Lancashire? Uh, accent and that's like northern like close to Ireland uh, England and I was like totally yeah like hey, never heard of it before in my life like I I shouldn't have lied to her but I I watched a show um, with Sarah Lancashire I think that's her name actually uh, where she plays like it's on Netflix where she plays like a detective or a cop so good and I I, I watched it for like days because I think I had a week to prepare for the audition and I would just like practice, I would record myself and I would listen back and I would practice again. And um, I absolutely love accents. They're so fun. I think I think accents from the UK are the hardest for me, but also a Philly accent, I cannot do. And I'm from Philly. Like I, I can't do a Philly accent. Like I've you tried. Have, you have the A. I have the A, but I can't Character. do, I can't do all of it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if, if, if I've been asked a couple times to do the Philly accent at auditions. I've never gotten the part because I just was unable to do it. And I, I would be around my family members who have very strong, thick Philly accents and they'll be like, hoagie and water and all that stuff. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just, all right, how do you, and I even like have recorded some of my friends, like when they were thinking that I was doing it just to like listen to them later. It, it doesn't stick. I can do a New York accent a lot quicker, a lot easier than it comes to me more naturally. I don't know. But yeah, accents from the UK are tough, but they're so fun. They're so fun to do. I, they're all tough for me. I just need time. And then after a day or two, I have it in my system. I have it in my veins and I'm usually good. Now ask me next time you need help with it. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes, that's right. Oh my God, you have so many talents. Look at this talented room. <laughs> I just I just spent a lot of time in theater, <laughs> so I, I learned how to do all the things. Oh, all the things, but those are the best things. That's why we live, right? Just to like do all of the creative <laughs> theater. theater. <laughs> oh, I miss it so much. I want to go to a show so badly. I'm like, it's depressing the hell out. The last show I went to was Anastasia on Broadway. Mm -hmm. I cried like a baby, and I brought my little cousin, and she was like, "Are we gonna go see Frozen?" And I was like. Uh, better. We're gonna see Anastasia. She's like, who's that? I was like, girl, how do you not? <laughs> yeah, because I don't think that was a Disney film. That was like, um, yeah. no, it was it? It's it not is. Disney. It's, it's not, not Disney. It's not Disney. I forgot what it was, but it like she's lumped in with the Disney princesses because she's yeah. like princess, right? And she was animated. Yeah. yeah. I forgot what it was, but definitely wasn't Disney. Yeah. No. I always love that song. Once upon a December, that right? was like the go home number, like. <laughs> okay, I will do it. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah. please. No, I I've actually thought about taking lessons for theater for like musical theater training. Do you do that, Monica? Are you? Uh, like no, but I know a hell of a lot of people in New York who do. Send and in Philly too. Oh, please send me their names because yeah. I would love to do when theater comes back. I've been studying more Shakespeare during quarantine. I've been working with uh, my friend Kitson, who is an incredible coach in, in terms of uh, Shakespeare. And it like reignited my love for the theater. I, it like, I was like so excited to like get on Zoom with her. And I was like, okay, like what, which one are we doing today? Are we doing like Taming of the Shrew? Let's do it. Like I was just like the best. Yeah. So I've been having a good time like creating at home myself. I do miss like the amount of auditions that I used to have and the amount of opportunities I used to have like 2019, early 2020, like this year has just felt so scarce, but you know, there, there's things to do to make you feel creative and alive again, you know, and you get to reignite the things that started you like, which is usually theater or like film or something like that. So I'm having a good time. Good. Hey. Thanks. And I mean, like in, you know, like, 
Danica and I had to transition into our virtual world of doing this, but then we get to talk to awesome people like you that, you know, maybe in regular times on a Thursday at 7 p.m., we wouldn't normally get to. So we're thankful. So. I do anything. I'm such a couch potato. You would have very easily gotten me. <laughs> anything. Like, I will be in bed when we hang out. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a dream. Yeah. <sighs> so, uh, overnight last night so i'm exhausted but anyway oh girl no we appreciate that thank you but um okay so before we go to the game um okay vincent said since you're wearing a clash shirt what would you say is your favorite guilty pleasure album or band you listen to that others wouldn't expect from you Whew, that's a lot yeah there's there's a band in high school and i don't know if anybody would have ever heard of them um but they were called porcelain and the tramps and I was obsessed. Look, look it up. I'm pretty sure she's a solo artist now. I know Porcelain Black. Porcelain I Black. Know. Yep, that's her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had such a crush on her in high school, and I, I loved her music. Like it really, really spoke to me. Her kind of like raunchiness. Uh, look it up. There, there was this one song, Sugar Cube. Uh, but like I would listen to over and over again and all of my like I drew her so many times like the very emo stuff like I would draw her with like just her face with like scribble in the background, you know, like I was just such a that that's so funny yeah my, my friend jay rand um he was signed to interscope and geffen and his first day out in the studio he was with red one and they were doing a song and this girl walks in he's like who is this girl with the split colored hair and oh my god like she's so pretty and she's like i'm a mix between britney spears and marilyn manson and like that's who she is i mean yeah maybe we don't talk about marilyn manson now but you know then yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, like Marilyn Manson was another one that like really spoke to me as a kid. So it's like very the whole situation's uh, very unfortunate because he got me through a lot. Like his his art got me through a lot, and it, it's a, it's a matter of um just disconnecting the art from the artist. Like a lot of people kind of do that with like Woody Allen and uh, maybe even Louis C.K. More recently, like you have to appreciate the art for what it is and maybe what it's done for you. And just like just disconnect it from the artist sometimes. It's a hard thing to do, but it is. But I couldn't agree with no, you that's more. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, it is very fair. But um, all right. So we have a game for you of would you rather? Obviously, there's no wrong answers. So whatever you feel, you answer. And uh, if you want to elaborate, fantastic. If not, we will move right along. So here's the very first one. Would you rather be in a film with Bruce Lee during his prime or in a film with Chuck Norris in his prime? Bruce Lee, 100%. No offense. I love Chuck Norris and I like love the Chuck Norris jokes. Like, I think like 10 years ago, like all we did was joke about Chuck Norris, like in a good way. Do, do we remember this? Is this in my mind? Like, oh, we no. I miss we it. We still do it. Yeah. Still, yeah. 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 But Bruce Lee, 100%. I would give a limb to be in, to, to bring him back to life so I could be in a film with him. I have to, when I found out he was no longer with us, which was bef way before my time when he passed, I cried like a baby. Like it was worse than finding out about Santa. So like, I, I love Bruce Lee. What about Santa? No, <laughs> he's a really good guy. Ah, really good. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember like for Danik and I too, like we were such a big fan of Brandon Lee, like, you know, same. <sighs> what are the and the crow is like amazing. The crow yeah. like speaks to every dark soul out there. So, and yeah. The crow <laughs> is my religion. All right, yes. uh, next one, Danica. All right. Would you rather train with Cobra Kai or train with Miyagi Do? Oh man. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe Cobra Kai. I kind of like. I kind of like the underdog aspect of the. I don't know. Like you know what I mean. Like so, probably Cobra Kai. I would say. Good choice. I mean, there's there's no wrong. Oh yeah, wild card, Eagle Fang. That is the yes. wild card. Ah. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, right. All right, here's the next one. Would you rather get an Art the Clown back tattoo or have to wear Art the Clown makeup every Saturday? Ooh, oh, that's a good question. I don't have any tattoos. Um, not, not because I don't want to, just because um, I've been told it's probably best not to have tattoos for this career right now, just because um, Damien has like joked with me that he's like, if you want to get a tattoo, like I'll come with you to every set and I'll cover it up for you. Like if they don't want you to have a tattoo, I'm like, dude, that's awesome. That'd be great. Um, I don't know. Some of those tattoos are sick. They are wicked. However, 
I wouldn't really mind rocking some Art the Clown makeup every Saturday. <laughs> I would love to scare some people. So maybe the makeup. Okay. Makeup it is. It's super yeah. hot. <laughs> and the little hat. I just love it. <laughs> All right. Would you rather be cast as a Marvel superhero or be cast as a Mortal Kombat villain? Mortal Kombat villain, 100%. Like, I love the idea of being a superhero, but the villains are just so much more complex. You, you, there's so many layers. And, and, like, villains, if you think about it, are very, they don't see themselves as villains. So it's right, just right. fun to play with. So, like, definitely. And in martial arts as well, like, I'd be, I know, I know that most Marvel superheroes get to flex some martial arts stuff capabilities, but definitely Mortal Kombat. I have a deep love for Mortal Kombat. I'm very excited to watch that. I know a lot of people are like, why do we need a new one? But <laughs> I think that, that trailer is saying the fatalities, oh, like I feel like my head exploded. I feel like smoke came out of my ear. I was like, oh. yeah, yeah. Um, which, uh, which Mortal Kombat villain would you like to be? <sighs> I have no idea. Okay. I'll, think about it. I'll think about it and get back. Yeah. Absolutely. You, you feel like a katana to me, but maybe that's just because I'm I'm really biased and I loved katana growing I love up. Katana. I, I really wanted to be katana. I know. <laughs> I don't know if even in the new world combat. Is she mad? I don't know. Anyway. Don't know. Okay, next one. All right. Uh is it me to read or you, Danica? You. Okay. Always dress like you're going to the Oscars or always dress in pajamas. Always dress in pajamas. I mean <laughs> Dresses are cool. I honestly, also, if I was going to the Oscars, I see myself more in pantsuits than dresses. Like I, I would love, I love a good pantsuit. Like I just think they're gorgeous, especially on like women. I think they look beautiful. Ta um, tailored, ooh, yes. Oh, tailored, like, wow. mm -hmm. and especially when they have like no shirt on underneath, ooh. and you can see their like bones. Like, yeah, I like that. <laughs> bones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing PJs like right now, so definitely PJs. That's amazing. Yeah, for, for my wedding, my dad was like, "You're wearing a tailored suit. Like you don't have an option." So it was very close between that and what I did end up wearing. But yeah, I love a good like, ooh, big yes. lapels, even tails. Are you kidding me? Yes, yes, oh, yes. I'm yes. so into it. All right, <laughs> next one. All right, would you rather? Compete on Dancing with the Stars or compete on American Ninja Warrior? You don't know how often I would watch American Ninja Warrior when I was a child. I watched that shit like it was chocolate. Like I just, I watched it all the time. I would love to be badass enough. And I even told myself as a kid, like, I'm going to be on that show one day. But it just ended up like not being a dream. Like that dream kind of faded after I stopped watching it. So definitely American Ninja Warriors. I actually have a friend who competed on Dancing with the, uh, the Stars, Jill Marini. And he was a he was he worked on Sex in the City. I worked on a film with him, the Christmas film I recently did. And when we were filming, he would constantly show us moves, like because he's a good dancer. So we would constantly be like, "Let's do some moves." And I was like, "Yeah," um, but I'm not. My, I love to dance, but American Ninja Warrior, hundred percent. Good choice. Very good. Yeah. I love the show too because yeah. I'm just like, wow, I could never, I could never <laughs> do that. But all right, uh, here's the next one. Would you rather? Always be cast as the femme fatale or always be cast as the ingenue? Femme fatale. I mean, both would be fun, uh, definitely. And I think it's weird because I've been told, especially by acting coaches, that the ingenue for me kind of comes a little bit easier. Like, it, it's, I, I have like a, a, a hard look about me, I think. Like, I think I come off like I have like an anger. It's, I'm not an angry person, but I look angry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but, but like the ingenue, I think I'm just a happy go lucky person. So I kind of, I'm able to get there quicker, but femme fatale is just so fun. And again, most of the time they're like more action packed roles. So probably femme fatale. Mm, fabulous. All right. Next one. All right. Would you rather visit a horror theme park or visit a children's birthday party? And to me, if you ask me, they're the same thing, but. <laughs> 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 Definitely a horror theme park. I mean, there, no, hands down. But no, I totally get what you're saying. I actually, um, I mean, I love kids, but like, I can't be around them for too long, or else I will tear my hair out. Like, even I like, like that. Yeah. I know. Like, I love kids. I think they're great, but like, I just, I don't know. I don't know how to communicate with them. I think so. Like, I just feel like an idiot, like trying to talk to because I talk to them like they're adults. 
and I assume that they understand what I'm saying, but they don't. Um, but yeah. <laughs> That horror theme park. Let's keep it short. Horror theme park. Yeah. I want to know I'm what exactly that the same way. cool zone is. What's the cool <laughs> zone? Like, what's <laughs> happening in there? Where's uh, where's David lurking? Let's All right. <laughs> uh, Joe. All right. And I think this is the last one. Would you rather do fight choreography in a Tarantino film or choreograph a reimagining of The Nutcracker? Tarantino film. Honestly, <laughs> I just watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood for the first time. My friends have been bugging me to watch that for like a year and i knew it was like two hours and a half long and i also was like trying to work myself up to the sharon tate story mm -hmm. and most of them, most people who've seen the movie kind of know what they did with that right. um I, I didn't want to be scarred for life because i know what really happened um but i i kill bill is one of my favorite movies of all time um so i would do anything anything to be in a tarantino film so yeah i i think I, I think it's a definite possibility for you. I feel like you have every single quality that he looks for in his, you know, actresses. I mean. Yo, Quentin, where are you at, bro? Like, <laughs> fast me. Good one. Good one. Facts. <laughs> That's amazing. I, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things, like, I don't think I could pick out a bad Tarantino movie. You know, like, some, some uh, directors are like, on. I love that movie. No, I hate it. That's the only one I really don't like. Sorry, I, I, love I don't that know movie. what it is. I really. I he also didn't that direct that, it. but th that's Robert Rodriguez. But true. <laughs> but maybe yeah. that's it. What'd you say, Lauren? Which Dan account did you say you didn't like? Dusk until dawn, or oh. dawn until dusk. Whichever. No, one. it's dusk till dawn. Dusk. I actually haven't seen that film. Vampires. See, it's weird. So yeah, mm -hmm. if, if you're not afraid of vampires, highly recommend. I like it a lot, but I also love anything that Danny Trejo's in. So. Oh yeah. I don't know what it is? Maybe I just thought I saw it. Probably when it came out, so it's been a hot minute. Revisit. I don't think you. I think you'll like it. It's super camp. It's. I. I really enjoy it. But I do love campy films. So. Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah! Well, Lauren, you have been such a pleasure, and we really appreciate having you back on again. So uh, before we wrap this up, is there any like final thoughts that you'd like to leave us with, or any projects you're allowed to plug, or anything else you're allowed to tell us about? Anything? We'll take it. Oh man, I don't know. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm, I'm so happy to see both of your beautiful faces. Um, I, I don't know. Just, uh, just keep doing well in the world. This goes out to everybody. Like, I hope you're focusing on your mental health, your your self care. I hope you're staying hydrated, and I hope you're loving yourself every day. And also, watch Terrifier Two. Comes out, please, 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 please. I know we're waiting. We're ready for it. We're ready for it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Be patient, but like, please watch it because like you're gonna love it. <laughs> Yay, we can't wait. And we know that since you've seen some stuff, we know that you enjoy what you've seen so far. So we can't wait to see it. But um, uh, before we do wrap this up, we want to go over our upcoming guests that we have. So uh, next Tuesday, we have Rick Prince and Rashad Santiago. They are special effects makeup artists. They actually both competed on the show Face Off, which is Danica and my, like one of our favorite shows. Okay. Um, next Thursday, we have Dave, David Ellison, who is the basis of Megadeth, which is insane. Um, next Tuesday, we are finally welcoming back Icarus Bell. They were also in the Texas um, debacle. I, I don't even know what to call it. Disaster. Uh, so, um, yeah. Yeah. So we're so thrilled to welcome them back. Then we have a couple weeks off. Danik and I are working on some stuff to put out for those few weeks off. And at the end of the month, uh, we have Mark Farner, who is the singer from Grand Funk Railroad. Uh, we're very excited. And then I guess I can say I've been talking to David and Damien about having them on sometime soon. So watch out for that. But yay, yeah. it happened. All right. Well, Lauren, once again, thank you so much. We'd love to have you back again. I feel like we have a gazillion more things we'd love to talk to you about. And Thanks. awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. Anytime. Yay. Awesome. We're going to party and we're going to go to New York and we're going to see a bunch of shows, shows and everything's open. And yeah. Yeah. please, please, please. Cannot wait. Yes. Yay. Oh. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you on Tuesday. Au revoir. Bye.